Um, my name is Trey Seals, and I run Vocal Type Co. It's the last Black-owned font foundry in America. Through Vocal Type, I specialize in creating typefaces inspired by the history of minority cultures, and specifically by focusing on progressive movements. So each typeface essentially highlights a piece of history from different minority cultures. The first font I ever made through Vocal was called Martin. Um, I call it a non-violent typeface. It was inspired by the protest signs carried during the Memphis sanitation strike of 1968. It was Dr. King's last cause before his death that year in April. The font itself is inspired by the signs that read, I am a man, the famous quote, along with honor King and racism. The first thing I do is try to figure out who I want to highlight, like if, whether it's a specific race or a specific movement or any or a specific gender. And then from there, I try to find a specific activist or community leader to name that font after. And then once I find that out, I try to find protest signs or some piece of ephemera that most people have a connection to. Like I will never do a sign that one people, one person made and one person carried during a protest. So I want to focus on protest signs, like maybe it's one protest sign that 100 people carry. Tonight across the tri-state, New York pushing for more police reform at the same time. These protesters on the move right now, and they are marching from Barclays Center to the NYPD's headquarters in Lower Manhattan. Their call is a force for reform and for racial justice, and it continues in the wake of the death. People are have no choice but to care. So now they're actively looking into black owned businesses and black owned font foundries and black owned design and black owned design companies. My growth really started when one of, one of my favorite designers, Jessica Walsh, who has 511,000 followers on Instagram, um, actually shared Vogel Type as a resource. And since then I've gone from 3,000 followers three weeks ago to over 10,000 today. <laughs> People have actually designed protest sign generators using my fonts. People have made stencils out of my fonts, murals that read Black Lives Matter. And since the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, I was asked to design a poster with a manifesto by Patrice Colores of the Black Lives Matter movement for WeTransfer. Um, I designed some Juneteenth banners for AIGA DC and the list goes on and on. My journey began at the age of four. It started with a headache and then excessive blinking, and then the headaches became paralyzing. I had a brain tumor. And as I grew, it grew with me until it became about the size of a golf ball. And through that ordeal, drawing and writing became my only means of really working through the pain. And from fifth to sixth grade, I would ask kids if they want me to graffiti their name on an index card for $3. And that just really inspired me to keep pursuing what made me happy. And I realized if I can make a living make, by making people happy, as, or as happy as I am when I'm making, then that's what I need to be doing for the rest of my life. When I saw a photo of Nancy Pelosi standing in front of a sign with one of my fonts, my heart just skipped a beat. I was so excited to see someone so influential actually standing in front of one of my thoughts. I know she didn't, probably didn't notice, but nonetheless, it made me really happy. When I graduated from Stevenson University in 2015, I accepted a job at a staffing agency in DC 
where I had the opportunity to work for eight or nine companies over the course of two years. And one day in March of 2016, I was designing another brand identity, still looking for inspiration, aimlessly scrolling through fonts, and I just got really bored and almost depressed, I would say. Everything just looked the same to me. I was looking for culture and character, but all I saw was monotony and stereotypes. But if our job is to communicate ideas to different communities, like black communities, brown communities, female communities, LGBTQ communities, then all these people need to have a seat at the table, even though currently they don't. So I wanted to figure out a way to diversify design. I knew I couldn't do that by through the education system or changing demographics. It just made sense to start at the root of all great pieces of graphic design, typography.